Hello. Welcome to my daily gardening and my farm. Today we are going to be discussing leaf hoppers and we're going to be looking at disease that they spread and what can be done to prevent or at least control it. So first we're going to start off by taking a look at what is leaf hoppers. So what really are leaf hoppers? It's leaf hopper is a common name for any member of the Cicadellidae family. They are very tiny insects that feed mostly on a wide range of plants and that include plants such as grass, shrubs, trees, vegetables, stuff like that. Now there are over 20,000 species of leafhoppers. Leafhoppers is said to produce microscopic granules that are called brocosomes and brocosomes is said to protect both the leaf uppers and the their eggs so the female leaf hoppers usually carry a lot of the more of the brocosomes so hi russell the females usually carry more of the brocosomes because at the moment when they are laying their eggs they will secrete it onto the eggs in order to protect it. Unlike a lot of other pests though, leaf uppers don't go through the pupae stage, so they don't produce a larva and they don't go through the pupae stage. They develop from nymph straight into adulthood. So if you're wondering what nymph is, Nymph is an immature form of invertebrates, whereas so whereas larvae do not go, do not actually look the larvae, sorry, larvae in general of any type of insects, they tend to go through the pupate stage and when they are in that larval stage, they don't really look like the adult insect. That's not the case with leaf uppers. The nymph of leaf uppers, they actually look like the actual insect, except that they don't have wings. Of course, during the latter part of the instar stage, they actually start to grow their wing, but the wings are not fully developed yet, so they cannot fly. Now, leaf uppers use their mouth to pierce into the plants. They like to pierce into the soft tissue of the plant and extract the liquid from it. Some members of this family, the leaf upper family, they're actually known to eat some insects such as aphids. Now, are leaf uppers dangerous to plants? They definitely are. They can actually transmit plant pathogens, including viruses. They can transmit phytoplasma. Now, phytoplasma is actually a bacterial parasite, and it feeds on the phlegm tissues of plants. Leaf uppers are also able to spread other types of bacteria. So these are some of the reasons why they are dangerous to your plants. Now, what are species that are most commonly found in our gardens and farms? There are quite a few species that can be found in gardens and farms, and these include things like the beet leaf uppers or the maize leaf uppers, the potato leaf uppers, 
the two spotted leaf uppers, rice green uppers, white apple uppers, rose uppers, and the grape leaf uppers. So these are the most common ones that can be found in garden. And as the name of each type of leaf hopper suggests, these are the plants that they prefer, but it does not mean that they are restricted to just that particular type of plant. Now the beet leaf hopper is what is responsible for spreading the curly top virus. Now these leaf uppers, the beet leaf uppers, they tend mostly to affect plants that are in the nightshade family. Yes, um, it is a lot of uppers because there are said to be over 20,000 different types of leaf, leaf uppers. So it would seem as if each type of leaf upper has a particular plant that they favor, although they will affect several different types of plants. <clears throat> now, the plant pathogens that leaf upper spread, it also affect the leaf uppers and it can multiply in their salivary gland. So let's talk about the cycle of these leaf hoppers. The adults will overwinter in plant debris or they will overwinter anywhere close to your garden. And then in the late spring, the female will lay around one to six eggs each day and they will lay this into the soft tissue of your plants. So your plants will develop what looks like bumps on the, on the stem or on whichever portion of the plant the leaf upper choose to lay its egg. Now each egg will take around six to nine days to hatch and then the young nymph will go through five instars and then become an adult. It takes roughly two to seven weeks for the eggs to become adults. Now, the adults live an average of 30 to 40 days, but they can actually live up to 90 days. Now, in the lifespan of a leaf hopper, they can lay up to 200 eggs. And they are quite difficult to control. They are said to be among the top three pests difficult pest to control in your garden. So once you recognize that you have them, it is important, as is the case with all other pests, to get on top of it as early as possible because you don't want it to reach the stage where it is actually difficult to control. Sadly enough for me, when I started seeing the little creatures on my plants i didn't really know that they were pests so i didn't do anything about them so pretty much a lot of my garden is covered with diseases that are caused by these leaf hoppers but that is why i'm sharing the information so you guys will know what to look for and if you see it happening to your garden then you can take steps to prevent it from spreading because it does spread in your garden. So within six days of reaching adulthood, the leaf uppers can actually start reproducing. And you can have up to three generations of leaf uppers that are overlapping. Now, how can you identify leaf uppers? Leaf uppers actually look very similar to aphids and to ligus bugs, but they can be found and they can be found on the underside of your leaves. But unlike aphids and ligus bugs, they do hop about sideways like a crab. 
So that is one thing that you can use to identify them because they don't go move forward, they up from side to side. Now they are faster than an aphid. Aphids, you can identify them different from the leaf uppers because aphids tend to have two carnicles protruding from their rear end. So that is one of the things that you're going to use to identify the aphids different from the leaf uppers. The nymphs of Ligos bugs, they are light green in color and they're also faster than the aphids. You can identify them by their antennae which have red tips. Leaf hoppers, you can identify them by one or more spines that are in long rows on their hind legs and they have characters, characters on their heads. So these are the things that you're going to use to identify the leaf uppers different from the ligos bugs and the aphids. Of course, you know, these are very tiny creatures, so you might have to use a magnifying, <coughs> excuse me, a magnifying glass or a microscope to see the difference between them. Sometimes the skin that the nymph exchanged can be seen on the under, under part of the leaves as well. Now, what are some dangers of leaf hoppers to your plants? When, are not dangers, but um, damages. When the leaf hoppers actually suck the sap from the leaves, the leaves will develop little light color specks or spots on it. Let's see, Russell says, if I had them, I would consider a systematic pesticide and try to find one that does not harm bees. Yeah, I'm gonna be discussing more about um, insecticides for these leaf uppers. Yes, yeah, so if you leave them, when you see these little light color speckle spots on your plants, that is an indication that you have pests. Sometimes these kind of symptoms can be left by aphids, they can be left by spider mites. So it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is the leaf hopper, but this is one of the symptoms that the leaf hopper leaves behind. And depending on how long the leaf hopper feeds on the plant if it is left untreated then the plant leaves could lose the vitality and it could actually with time turn the leaves turn brown and the plant won't necessarily die but the leaves will turn brown and the leaves may die that are affected but the plant itself will not die Mature plants may survive much better than if the young plants are affected. And if you have leaf hoppers affecting your plants, the chances are if you don't get them under control very fast, your plant may be stunted. And if you, even if the plant is surviving, the new growth that is on your plants these, the leaf hoppers are going to go after that and the new growth is going to be stunted as well. Oh, hi, princess. Yes, so they can stunt the growth of your plants. Now, the next damage that leaf hoppers can cause is the curly top virus. Now, what is the curly top virus? It is a virus that is spread by these leaf uppers. It is a viral disease that affects many types of crops. Yes, Russell, I agree with you. You check on the side of the leaves with your magnifying glass. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm happy that you're here too, princess. So it causes your plan to become smaller when you have the curly top virus. The leaves and the petals of your plants will actually shrivel. It will become twisted or curled up. And then the plant, the entire plant growth will be stunted. Now, when you have curly top virus, it is easy to assume if you're in an hot environment that it is the heat that is affecting your plants. But if you pay attention to the name of the plant, curly top, so usually the top part of your plant is what usually gets affected first and it is a part that is going to show the most damage and it is because this is the youngest part of the plant. So that is where most of the damage is going to be seen. Now, the disease can actually be reduced by keeping your plants in shade because the leaf hoppers like to feed when the sun is hot. So if you can protect your plants by planting them in the shade or partial shade for those that love sun. Further on in the discussion, I'm going to be discussing some of the things that we can do in order to protect the plants, whether to prevent or to try to control both the leaf uppers and the curly top virus. Now the curly top virus is spread from plants to plants when the leaf hoppers feed on one and then jump to the other plants and start feeding on it. So that is how the virus spread. So without the leaf hopper being present, the virus does not spread. But as long as the leaf hopper is going from plant to plant, then the virus will spread. Now both the leaf hopper and the virus can have a wide range of hosts. Now, once infected, the leaf uppers will remain infected for life. It cannot be gotten rid of, and it is the same thing. Once the plant gets infected, there's nothing, there's no cure for it. So once a leaf hopper is infected and it actually goes onto the plant and start feeding, it only takes a matter of seconds for the plant to become infected. Now, it usually takes about 7 to 14 days for the virus to start showing any symptoms or for the plants to start showing any symptoms. And the plant, once it is infected, it can still produce fruit. It's just that the fruit might not be as luscious or as healthy looking as it would have been if it did not have the virus. Now, what can you do to prevent or control the curly top virus? First of all, as mentioned before, the disease love hot weather. So if you can water your plants to help keep them cool, that might help. You want to keep your plants shaded as much as possible. You want to handle your soil carefully. You don't want to plant your trees densely because you need proper airflow and then the closer your plants are together, then the more likely it is for the uppers to jump from one plant to the other and to spread the curly top virus. Where possible, you want to prune your plants. And then for the leaves that are falling, you want to remove fallen leaves from underneath your trees or whatever plants you have because the paddles and the nymph can actually stay or overwinter in these. So you want to get rid of those as much as possible. Now, insecticides such as pyrethrin and azadiractin can help to control the leafhopper population. 
inspect so what you want to do is inspect your plants regularly and you want to do so especially in the first 20 days of planting or transplanting your seedlings because this is the stage that is going to determine the rate at which the curly top virus will spread and this is the part the point where the plant is the most tender which means that that is when the leaf hoppers are going to be affecting the plants more. Let's see what it says. Well, I have to take a better look at a couple of pepper plants. The top leaves are curling up. Yes, I'm having the same thing on my pepper as well. I'm having it on my peppers. I'm having it on some of my tomatoes, especially those in the self-wicking buckets. My beans have it. So quite a few of my plants, I've even seen it on one of my pumpkins, so quite a few of my plants have it, unfortunately. So where was I? Yes, so the first 20 days after you've planted out your garden is when you want to keep the most watch on what is happening with your plants where these leaf hoppers are concerned. Now... Keeping your plants properly nourished will also help to strengthen the plants. And by strengthening the plants, you make it so that even if the plant is affected by these leaf hoppers or by the curly top virus, it will be able to still thrive to an extent. It won't perform as well as if it was not infected. But by keeping it properly nourished, you will give it a fighting chance. Now, while keeping your plants that are infected nourished, you want to be careful that you're not using fertilizers that have a higher nitrogen content because that is going to attract more of the pests because you know that nitrogen is going to increase the foliage of your plants. So you want to monitor the level of nitrogen that you are feeding to your plants. One thing that you can do after, your, after you have harvested your garden or before you start planting, once you have cultivated the soil, you can add a garden lime to the, plant, to the soil and mix it into the soil. If your soil is wet, Allow it to dry out fully for seven to 10 days before you actually start planting. Also, you want to use, you can use yellow sticky trap to attract these leaf uppers. And you can repel the leaf uppers by putting strips of aluminum foil into your garden because this is going to act as a reflector and repel the leaf hoppers. Now, you can also use some form of netting to cover your plants. So whether you're going to be using roll cover or whatever type of netting you have access to. Now, the smaller the holes, you don't want really tiny holes, but you want holes that are small enough where you can, the plants can still get sufficient amount of sunlight, especially for plants that love direct sunlight. So you want to use plant that netting that has enough holes or large enough holes where the plants can get a reasonable amount of sunlight. But at the same time, you want it to be small enough where these pests cannot get in. Now, if you're going to be using some form of netting to cover your plants, you want to make sure that the netting is not touching your plants because if it is touching your plants, then the uppers may have access to some of the leaves of your plants. And once the uppers have access to any portion of the plants that they can feed on, that's all it takes for the virus to spread. Thankfully, the virus doesn't spread from plant to plant unless the leaf hoppers are able to jump from plant to plant. But it is best to keep the netting off the plants. Another method that you can use to help control the curly top virus 
is by sanitizing your tools and your soil where possible. Now we're going to be discussing a little bit more about the soil and the Skrelitop virus as we go further down into the discussion. Now, if you use neem oil solution, you want to use this on a weekly basis. Neem oil will, it may not kill the leaf uppers, but at least it will act as a repellent for them. So it is, in fact, it is effective in that way, but it may not kill them. Diatomaceous earth is said to be effective against them as well. And it is recommended that if you have plants that are infected, at the first sign of infection before the virus spread to many plants, you want to get rid of these plants. Of course, sometimes, as is the case with my experience, I thought it was because of the heat wave that my plants were curling up. So I didn't remove the plants. I just allow it to stay there because I figured with watering and after the heat wave have passed, the plant would have been restored. But it is only when I noticed that my beans started looking strange and I thought that it was the heat too, but then I realized it wasn't improving that I realized that I was having some other problems. The unfortunate thing is that sometimes these pests can be so small that you might not be able to see them with the naked eye. Sometimes you can, depending on the species or the size of the pest. But, and as you know, they jump around and they jump pretty fast. So you might be looking at one plant or a few plants and not seeing anything and you assume that, okay, it's okay, but they can be there so make sure you take a magnifying glass with you when you're checking your plants now can seeds be infected with the curly top virus no your seeds will not be affected by the curly top virus and therefore if you are if your intention is to harvest seeds for plants it is okay to harvest your seeds from the plants that has the curly top virus. Oh, hi, Matt Bajan. Say, it is hot. I'm, I'm sure I drank more water than a tree today <laughs> to stay hydrated. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's It's been a rather crazy year where weather is concerned. Yeah, it's not hot outside today, thankfully. Yesterday wasn't too bad, but then they say we are expecting another heat wave again. So it seems as if every week for a few days we're going to be experiencing some heat waves. And there is no rain in between the heat wave to cool the place down. So it has been a crazy year. Hopefully the growing season will last long enough so that we are able to harvest stuff. Because... It is so crazy, I don't really know what to expect. Let's see, Princess says, perhaps wipe off the insects before, before so they jump. <laughs> yeah, so as I was saying, the seeds of the... When seeds, when the plants are affected by the curly top virus, the seeds are not affected by it. So you can actually harvest the seeds for planting the following year. Now, what beneficial insects can you use to control leaf hoppers? Green leaves, <laughs> green lace wings, ladybugs and assassin bugs these will eat any stage of the leaf hoppers but they are less effective on the adult leaf hoppers rubber flies big eye flies or big eye bugs damsel bugs 
minute pirate bugs and parasitic wasp. These all prey on leaf hoppers. So getting or having these in your garden will help to control the leaf hoppers. Now I'm gonna have to research to see if any of these, well, I know the ladybugs are here, although they are far less than I had last year. Uh, the lace wings are here because I see them over at my niece's house, but I don't see them in my on my property, so I don't know why they're not here because she just lives a block away from me. So I'm going to have to see what I can get here, what bugs that preys on these creatures I have in my locale. And if I don't have them in my locale, I'm going to have to see if they can survive here. And if so, I might have to import them because... They're not behaving well on my crop at all. And the funny thing is I spent so much time over the winter preparing for pests, looking at, oh, I forgot to research that. Well, <laughs> I guess I can do that later. Let's just jot it down. I need to find out if there are any plants that can be companion planted to repel these leaf hoppers. Okay. Right, so yes, yeah, so these are some of the pests that not pests but beneficial insects that will prey on the leaf hoppers. Let's see, Mokbejan says, come to think of it, I haven't seen one ladybug here yet this year. Oh, wow. I've seen a few, but compared to previous years, I'm not seeing a lot, which is rather troubling because I usually see quite a lot of them here. Now, is the curly top virus soil borne? No, curly top, curly top, <laughs> curly top virus is not soil borne. So, however, although it is not soil borne, leaf uppers and their eggs can actually overwinter in it especially if you have plant debris hanging around your soil, then these leaf hoppers and their eggs and their nymph can overwinter in it and then the following growing season, they will be there waiting to decimate your crops. So you have to take whatever precautions you can to See if you can actually get rid of them. And as I mentioned before, you can use garden lime to mix in with your soil after you have harvested or prior to planting in your garden. Now, because the pathogen or the curly top virus does not survive in the soil, you don't need to do crop rotation if your plants are infected with the curly top virus. Can curly top virus be cured? No, there is no known cure for the curly top virus. And insecticides are not very useful against the leaf hoppers. The pyrethrin and the azadiractin azad, can be used to control them, but it will not destroy them. It will just slow them down really, but it won't really get rid of them. So insecticide does not really work to eradicate them. So prevention is better than cure. Once you find out that you are having them, you want to take whatever action you can. And before you even start having them, if you had them the previous year, the chances are that they're going to return the following year. So planning ahead whether you're going to get these beneficial insects that prey on them 
or you're going to be using things like row cover or some form of netting. But once you have them the previous years, it's recommended that you make preparation to have them the following year. Now, can plants that are affected by the curly top virus be composted? As you know, as gardeners, we like to compost the remains of our plants after we have harvested. So can they be composted? The good news is that yes, the plants that are affected with curly top virus can be composted because once the plant has died, the curly top virus cannot survive in it for a long period of time. So what are some of the plants that are affected by the curly top virus? As I mentioned before, let's see, Russell says, it is my habit to use worm casting tea and feed the soil. If I have issues, my first response is to spray plants with worm tea. This is usually all that is needed to get plants to harvest. Okay. Yeah. I am now trying this method as well because you keep vouching for it. So um, that's what I did in my video yesterday. I covered my plants with worm, some of the plants with worm tea. And then some of them I just put the worm tea at the root and then some of them I just use the castings because the plants look unhealthy. So I wanted to know if the casting is going to revive these plants. I know that for those that are damaged by the curly top virus, the worm tea will not be able to restore the plant fully. Or at least I'm guessing it won't be able to restore it fully because it is said that there is no known cure, but I'm thinking the worm tea might be able to restore it better than any other form of treatment. Or at least it will give it a fighting chance. Well, McBajan says, Russell is crazy good. Great tips seen here. Yes, he's always sharing some really practical, very helpful tips. And that is the purpose of having the live because we get to share information that can help one another. And sometimes there are some things that you will not think about that someone else will think about. Others will have different experience from you, different methods that work for different problems. And sometimes you know something too and you don't remember it, but